this old school cold soup favorite will make your summertime lunch or dinner or midnight snack a very happy one. Bring back fishy swaz. The name is the fanciest thing about this summertime soup, and you don't even say it the fanciest way. Vichy Soie, the pronunciation that's most divorced from actual letters, usually the way to go when it comes to French, is, in this case, incorrect. It's Vichy Soie's, and even more hilarious hey I'm wearing a bray mouthful. After I said it recently, a friend of mine pointedly went with the Soie, clearly to kindly demonstrate the error of my ways. I just let her do it. It's too short for pronunciation shaming, and summer's way too short. Plus it's only soup. The French, Bichy Soise also sounds approximately 17 times better than, cold potato leek soup, and that is apt, for cold potato leek soup is approximately 17 times better than it sounds. But even its Frenchiness is a little bit fudged, in, mastering the art of French cooking. Julia Child rather tersely points out this is an American invention. A talk of the town profile from the New Yorker, Vintage 1950, details that Vichy Soise was the idea of Louis Diet, the celebrated chef of the Ritz. While he himself was French, and vividly so, a mustached man of 65 with curly gray hair and large, black, bushy eyebrows, he originated the soup on the hotel's New York City premises in 1917. Having recalled that, in his childhood summers, he and his brother would pour cold milk into the potato leek soup his mother and grandmother made, and how very good the result was, he decided to make the patrons of the Ritz such a French country treat. The Ritzy types loved Bichy Soise so much that in 1923, Diet yielded to their demands to keep it on menu not just during New York's sweltering season, but throughout the year. Diet grew up near Vichy, hence, the name. The New Yorker notes that Vichy Swaz, in its heyday, was a soup for the stars. Steel magnate Charles M. Schwab ordered it the first day it was on the menu, and asked for a second helping. President Franklin Roosevelt's mother, who'd also apparently deeply enjoyed Vichy Swaz at the Ritz, once called me up at 5 in the afternoon and asked me to send eight portions to her house. Diet told the New Yorker. He sent her two quarts and the recipe. Mrs. Roosevelt's cook must have been relieved, for Vichy Soise is ridiculously easy to make. With a minimum of ingredients and an extremely straightforward preparation process, it makes gazpacho, which, let's face it, is sort of like eating a bowl full of salsa, look like a foray into molecular gastronomy. You can make it more complicated. Diet's recipe calls for onion in addition to the leeks, while both he and Child insist that you shove the soup through a sieve in addition to blending it, to achieve ultimate smoothness. With all due respect, the delicate allium of the leeks should be appreciated without any pushy cousin's company, and the eating interest is boosted, in my humble opinion, by leaving some smaller bits of potato slice intact. A 1957 New York Times version calls for the addition of tomato juice, a level of introduced acidity that seems, frankly, bizarre. The entire point of this soup is simple, cool creaminess. The Times suggests serving it alongside, among other things, the bizarrely named epigram of lamb. Child's recipe is also confoundingly butter-free, when that richness seems key, and the smell of the leeks cooking in it is just heavenly. Some would ominously warn you that with soup this simple, your ingredients have nowhere to hide, so you best use homemade stock and etc. I'm here to tell you that it is probably impossible to make bad Vichy Soise, and also, who wants to make stock in the summertime? Do spring for organic stuff, if you can, especially the cream. This recipe calls for less of that than others do but, I think, still attains pure luxury. I love cream with all my heart and was very surprised to find more than a half cup over it in this instance, especially in the heat. Make your Vichy Soise when the kitchen's relatively cool, after sundown or in the morning. You will thank yourself later in the day, a cup or a small bowl is both perfectly cooling and gently filling when it's really too hot to eat. Vichy Soise plus a crab or shrimp salad and a glass of crisp French white wine, maybe pick pole, this is what a summer lunch or supper wants to be. If you have Vichy Soise leftovers, you will find yourself going to the fridge late at night for a cool spoonful. 
fishy swaz serves for you will have a lot of leftover leak here. If you aren't insistent on pure whiteness with your vichy swaz, and, um, why would you be, you can absolutely make a second batch using the nice light green part of the leeks. Leek tops, Chef Jerry Tronfeld advises, stir fry beautifully, while Chef Tamara Murphy says she always uses the tops, charring them with onion, poblano, whole scallion, whole jalapenos, chop it up, add chopped garlic, cilantro, parsley leaves, mint and lime. Also known as Salsa Verde, my version, anyway. Jill Leitner, author of the forthcoming, Scraps, Peels, and Stems, suggests you can chop them and use some olive oil and salt and roast on high heat, making crispy little oniony chips. Or slice, saute briefly to soften, then roast meat, fish on top. Or, if you want fancy, shred and fry for a crispy little garnish for soup, salad, pasta. You could also make a leek-based stock and make your next vichy swaz even leakier. 3 tablespoons butter 4 large leeks, white part only thinly sliced, about 2 cups, 3 cups potato, peeled and thinly sliced, about 3 medium potatoes, a mandolin is your friend for fast slicing, 1 quart, 4 cups, 32 ounces, chicken stock or vegetable, for vegetarian, 1 half cup heavy cream, 1 teaspoon kosher salt, 1 half teaspoon white pepper, or black pepper, if you don't mind speckled soup, a few tablespoons of chives, finely chopped plus chive flowers for extra credit, 1. Melt the butter in a large pot over medium-low heat. Add the sliced leeks, sprinkle with a little salt and cook for about 4-5 to five minutes, stirring once a minute or so, just as often, you don't want them to brown. 2. Add the sliced potato and chicken, or vegetable, stock, stir to combine and bring just barely to a boil, reduce heat, and simmer for 45 minutes, stirring approximately every 15 minutes. 3. Blend, an immersion blender is easiest, but a regular one will do, be careful, hot, until as smooth as you like, with all due respect to Julia Child, leaving some smaller bits of whole potato is nice. 4. Stir in the cream, salt and white pepper, and chill until cold. 5. Top each bowl with chopped chives and bits of chive flowers, if you have them.